be back together. I heard we just uh, had a little Happy Five soccer club yesterday, and uh, I think half the church was out there. Praise the Lord. It took a little bit of a mini army. I think that uh, word's getting out that the concession stand is the coolest place to hang out. They had a bunch of girls and guys over there having a great time, but it was uh, really just a, a wonderful, wonderful Saturday morning, a great kickoff Friday evening. We moved to meet the coach inside, and we had all kinds of people running in and out of here, and, and they really loved the new decorating we've done. <laughs> they love what we did with the ceiling tiles in the lobby. I, I think we're going to have to take some pictures and pass it on. It's a nice remodel. Hang in there, everybody. I'm going to go to war next week with the insurance company. I can't wait. I love a good tussle. <laughs> what can I tell you? Anyway, in the name of Jesus, of course, of course. But we'll make sure that we get things expedited. Uh, it's seemingly, uh, we have a good insurance, good coverage, and things, uh, as far as we know, will be taken care of. But the only way you know they're taken care of is when you see that big check. So going after a check next week, yeah, be praying that we can get things resolved and be able to get our carpet redone and the ceiling tiles done. We already have someone that's contracted out for both. It's just a matter of them getting the go-ahead, and we'll get it done. So continue to pray for that. We are one week out of Easter. Dwayne just mentioned it. Resurrection Sunday. We'll be witnessing his resurrection through some drama and through some music next week. Make sure that you take the time to invite someone and let them know that, hey, this is, uh, this is Easter Sunday and maybe you don't go to church much, but we've been friends and I would just love to have you come and we're just going to have a, a really mini drama and some beautiful music and uh, you will be blessed, church, and you come uh, next week. There is a surprise musical couple of things that some of you may have heard about, and it's part of our, our ministry and the depth of what God is uh, working in in his way and making us better in a lot of ways, and that'll be our short message. I'll come back up here in a little bit after we uh, have something with our ministry fair. So a week from today, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, and again, the spring is here. The spring has sprung. It's supposed to be 218 degrees today. Hallelujah. Yesterday morning for Happy Five, it started a little cold, but we made it. It was okay. And everything is uh, going according to God's way. In the right time, I heard, is a good thing to think about. So praise God for his timing. Right is always better than just good. And today, again, we'll continue in our better series. This morning kicks off with, though, a uh, ministry fair. You've seen a slide up there, and you say, well, usually ministry fair, we knock down everything, put tables up, put all the ministries before the people. We've got donuts and breakfast, and we have done that a number of times in the past, either in the fellowship hall, the auditorium. But over the last year or so, we've been kind of thinking through and praying through, and I wanted to get to a place where we could have a ministry fair like this a couple times a year. So today, we're going to put some ministries in front of you. There is about 100 people in the room here, give or take. Sometimes there's usually, sometimes usually. That's a nice little phraseology. Yeah, sometimes, not always, there are more people in here. And we take in, if hopefully you can hear, two ears per person. There's more ears in here to hear the message of these ministry leaders and what they want to share with you today. There's going to be four ministries that we share, uh, about three of them, and then I'll incorporate a little bit of ADP Sports with a little testimony in a place where, again, you can know what God has been doing, what God is doing right now, and what the vision may be for the future for our ministries that are going to be highlighted. In the fall, we'll be highlighting four more ministries as well. So for today, four in the fall, we want to keep the ministry... Um, things that God has put in this church before you for you to pray, to you to consider. Next week, you will receive an email, church, of this ministry fair and an opportunity to respond. You can talk to the ministry leaders anytime. That's fine. But I'm going to send an email out by middle of the week. It says, hey, we had a ministry fair on Sunday. You heard from the children's ministry director, you heard from the communications ministry team, you heard from the ministry support team, and you heard a little bit about ADP Sports, and you'll be able to click a button and say, I would like to know a little bit more. Please get me some more information and get me a, a, a connection, a communication time to talk to that person. We're going to continue to do this for a little while. So again, 
all of you can say, hey, I know what you're talking about when you talk about that ministry, or I know who to go to when I have a question. And again, you can always contact the office and ask, and we'll be more than willing to answer any of your questions about the ministries that are in this church. This morning we have, again, as I mentioned, our children's ministry, communications, and ministry support team. And again, I'll incorporate ADP Sports into our short message at the end or the, the second half of our morning. So without further ado, Pam Snow, come talk to us about children. Would you like this to go like this? Bam! Oh, pfft. you know what? I'm the one that's not qualified for this. We need a ministry person here. Oh, you like that advertisement? How's that? Is that good? I'll get it up close. I'm not on that team, and you know why, Rick. I don't know what I'm doing. Good morning. <laughs> um, I love getting to talk about Faith Place, and if you ever catch me out here, you will, you will know that I love, um, I love Faith Place, I love children's ministry, and I love getting to talk about it. And knowing that I've got five or six minutes, um, you know, I just really had to decide what is it that I want to share, because there's a lot that goes on. And I could be up here for way longer than you would like me to be up here if I took the time to just go through every class and everything that goes on. And, and something else um, was laid on my heart that I would rather emphasize. So I'm going to start I'm going to give you the Reader's Digest version of what Faith Place is and what we do. Um, Faith Place is the, the name of our children's ministry. Um, we work with birth up through fifth grade elementary school. And so you'll see on this side of the, of the church, we call it Faith Place Friends. Those are our babies up through pre-K. And then Faith Place Travelers are over in the big room. And that's our kindergarten through fifth grade. And so, so what do we do? Um, we love them first and foremost. Um, we love your kids. We want them to, to know that they're loved and feel that they're loved. We teach them. Um, we teach them from the time they can walk they just start with simple little concepts of, you know what, God made your ears. You know, we want them to start to hear about God. And then as they grow, we go into stories. We start to teach them scriptures and memory verses and just all kinds of awesome Bible things. And we also want to have an environment where they begin to learn what it's like to be part of a church family. Make friends at church. You know, we're a family and they're an important part of it. So, you know, it's children's ministry. It's, most of you are familiar with the children's ministry. And so the what we do, I'm happy to talk to anybody who wants more details. Um, but what I really, really wanted to share with you guys today um, are two simple little concepts from two verses that are really foundational to our children's ministry. Um, and so the first one is, why do we do what we do? And so if you look at, I put a verse up there, it's out of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 15, and this is what it says, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So why do we do what we do? Because eternal things are at stake. Now, we have a lot of fun in Faith Place, but let me just assure you, our, our goal with Faith Place is not to entertain your kids for an hour or two so you can go about your day and do whatever you want to do. Now, we have fun, but eternity is at stake. Um, every one of those babies, toddlers, children is going to hit the same point in their life that we all were. You're confronted with that question of, who is Jesus? Who is God? What, what does he mean to me? What must I do to be saved? And that verse tells you right there, those answers are in the scriptures. So it's more than a sweet Bible story. It's more than how to have a good life. How do you have your eternity secured? Those kids are going to have to answer those questions one day. And it might be a little bit older. But the answers came from the scriptures. And you'll notice there in 2 Timothy you guys know who Timothy is. He didn't just wake up one day as an, a young man and decide, I would like to lead men. I am going to be a pastor. Put me in. He's been learning them since he was a child. And so I want you to understand that too. Why do we do it with children? Why do we care? Because they are capable of learning. It's amazing what they can take in. And God puts it in there and he plants it in their hearts. So why? Because it's eternal and because they can learn. 
So the, the last, honestly, concept I'm going to leave you with is, is found in verse number 14, and it's about the who of Faith Place. If you'll read it with me, it says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast seen, been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And I just think that's really striking, because if you read the whole chapter, and if you even look at the verse right before, it's really dark. It's about the last days. It's about how perilous the times are. And the verse, verse number 13 right before that, Paul's even saying, Timothy, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. But guess what? He says to him, continue, keep going, continue in the things that you've learned. But then he tells him to remember who taught him. That's really important. The who is really important. For Timothy, we know from the Bible, his mother, his grandmother taught him with real faith. Paul taught him. He was part of a local body of believers. Those teachers were important when there are seducers trying to put crazy thoughts and a new, new, new idea every other day. Paul says, Timothy, remember who taught you because it was real and their faith was real. So this is my time to invite you guys. Um, if you are a member of First Bible Baptist Church, my question to you is, are you willing to be one of those who's? There are things we'd like to continue to accomplish in Faith Place. There are classes we would like to open back up. There are ways we would like to grow, to help you know, reach more kids, to be more one-on-one -on -one with more kids. But that takes a who. For, are you willing to be a who that will share about the God that you know? You know what he's done in your life. To be one of those who's that those little kids and then bigger kids and eventually grown kids can look up to and remember, man, there they are. They're still there. They believe what they say. I, I see them walking around. There's my invitation. So Pastor Brown will talk about emails and ways you can grab me in the hall. I'm always running around. You can email me. But that's my challenge to you is think about, are you willing to be a who um, for these eternal things for the kids of First Bible? Good morning. My name is Mindy Patterson, and I lead our communications team. So I have a group activity to start us off with. I want you to raise your hand if you think of yourself as a communicator. Even if you're not very good, yeah. Actually, everybody's hand should be raised. Because whether you're a good or bad communicator, we're all communicators. We all communicate something, even if you're silent. Your body language communicates something. Um, and so here at First Bible and our communications team, what is it that we desire to communicate? What does it even mean to communicate? You can go to my next slide. Communication, I put up there, I'm a word girl. I like to look up what things actually mean because we think we know what they mean. But it really means the imparting or exchanging of information or news. We are inundated with information and news all the time. So that second definition there, it is a means of connection between people or places. And that's the deeper part of what communications is here. We can talk about a lot of things. We can give a lot of news to a lot of people. But what kind of news do we here at First Bible desire to give? In Psalm 111, it's a picture of my Bible that I have right up here. I have a church Bible and a home Bible. This is my home Bible. It doesn't have sermon notes in it. It has the things, it's kind of like a... a a letter back and forth between me and God. And, um, and you can see up there my note. It says communications ministry. Psalm 111 says, praise ye the Lord. That ye, that's including everybody. It doesn't say praise you the Lord, praise ye. That's, that's in the hillbilly version, it's y'all or yuns. That's everybody. We're all to praise the Lord. Well, what are we praising him for? Where do we praise him? It says in verse two, or it says there in verse one, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. We're gathered here, we're assembled, we're a congregation. That's us, that's first Bible. In verse two, it says the works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. There are many works of the Lord and they are great. 
and they should be sought out by you, by me. It's in verse 3, it says, His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. That's why we talk about the things. That's why we praise the Lord. It's for his honor, for his glory, and because he is righteous. And verse 4 says, he has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. So what do we do? What do we do with that? You can go to the next slide. Our desire in the communications team is to declare what God is doing and what God has done in the lives and the ministries of, here at First Bible. Isaiah 12, 4 talks about praising the Lord again, but it also says to declare his works among the people, and that's what we do. We have an incredible pastor who's been appointed of the Lord, anointed by God, who gives us vision and mission and direction. The communications team comes along beside him to support what God has called him to do. We also want to contribute to the growth and the people and the ministries here at First Bible. So how do we do that? That's my next slide. How do we get involved? How do we do it? We need key social media people. Obviously, communications, we're talking to people. Um, we run the Facebook page, Twitter, we have Instagram, we have a YouTube channel. There's many different ways. Group participation number two. How many of you use social media of some type? That's the majority of our culture these days. And I need, specifically, we have a couple of people that we, the two of us, we team up. Actually, there's three of us that, uh, that run Facebook right now. That's our church's main way to get to exchange information. But we don't just want to exchange information. information. We want to connect with people. And I need people to partner with me for that because we can't, I can't do it all. The couple of people that I have helping me, we just can't do it all. And so if that's an area that you are interested in, that you would be willing to walk with us and learn some things and learn how to do that on behalf of First Bible, I want you to get a hold of me. We also need photographers. I actually have a large pool of photographer people, but again, how many of you have ever taken a picture on your phone? Almost all of us. You can send that to me, and we use it. Every photo that you see up on the screen has come from someone in the communications ministry, somebody somewhere. But the third thing on that list I had up there was for you to get involved. You'll hear, you've heard about children's ministry. You're going to hear about a couple more ministries. There, and, and even the pictures up there on the screen, that one was Happy Five yesterday. Even if you're not coaching a team or helping somewhere, you could still be there. You can still be involved. You can even take a picture and send it to me, and we can use it for things like that because God works through those things. The top picture of the smaller ones was the men's conference a few weeks ago, and there's a lot in that picture. There's, there's things from um, music to behind the scenes to just sitting there and receiving what God would have. That bottom picture was our, our dinner theater that was also really just a few weeks ago. And my point in that is, is that God is at work here. We want to talk about what he is doing. We're about in three weeks to celebrate 25 years of what God has done with First Bible. But God isn't done with us yet. And we want to continue to tell his story because he is honorable, he is righteous, and it is for his glory. So if you have any questions, let me know. You can catch me, again, running around the hallways, or as, as Brownie said, he's going to send out an email this week. Thank you. All right, so uh, following two uh, well-done uh, speeches, or uh, <laughs> you get me, all right? Um, Mindy mentioned behind the scenes. Well, that's us behind the scenes, not in front of the microphone. Um, this is the ministry support team. And uh, really, our, 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 the def definition of what we do is we do, try to do everything that we can to make everything that the ministry leaders, teachers, uh, in any ministry in church, be successful, right? Uh, to, to, to help you uh, create an environment where you can worship. Um, and, and worship not just in the music, but worship uh, as you sit in lessons. And 
are hard if, you know, one, one quick verse, um, it's a verse that's been on my, on my mind, on my heart for, for quite some time. Um, Colossians 3.23, and, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. And I think that really describes the heart of, of our workers is um, we may not be perfect, right? We, we, we mess up often, um, but we try, right? And, and uh, we, we work really hard to uh, remove um, distractions. We work really hard to, uh, you know, whether it's sound support or supporting in the slides is to create an environment where the ministers can minister and the worshipers can worship. And uh, that, that I think is, is probably the best definition that I can give you. Um, go ahead and go to the next slide. Yeah, so we, we operate in five areas. Um, audio, um, so, so Debbie and Greg and Abby back here at the sound desk, they, they work quite hard to make sure that you can hear what's going on. Um, and they work in the fellowship hall and other areas. So as we move around, um, this team works for sound reinforcement. Uh, the video team, so what you see on, on the screen overhead or um, around the building, there's, there's videos, uh, screens all over the place. We support all of those. And uh, this team, uh, so it's, it's Christine, it's Brandon, it's Ed up there now. He's, he's subbing in today. Um, this team works to make sure that these slides go. Uh, part of that is, is as the speaker is Brownie or whoever's up here speaking, that we can take the, the clicker off their mind and allow them to focus on what God would have present to you. Uh, the lighting team, so you notice during praise and worship it gets dim, during videos it gets black, uh, during service time the, the, the lights come on full so you can actually read your Bibles. And uh, those are all things that, that's taken care of by those same folks up there, they, they run all of that. Um, new to us a couple years ago when uh, COVID hit and we got shut down, um, we spun up a streaming team and uh, over a matter of a couple of weeks we, we learned how to stream. And so Ed and Mike um, get together and every Sunday they run what looks like NASA back up there in, in the room. It's, they've got a lot of video screens in front of them. Um, they've got audio coming in and they put it all together and do their best to send something out to you that allows you to sit at home and participate in the ministries here at church. Um, the final area that we work in is the technology and infrastructure. And this is kind of our catch-all bucket. Uh, this is the bucket that, uh, you know, network infrastructure around the building as you tune in on your phone to uh, FBBC public uh, to use the Wi-Fi that's that's supported by our ministry um, the ministry also reaches out and we we change light bulbs um, we we put in new lighting infrastructure in the building um, it kind of a, a varied basket of goods if you will and uh, to kind of give you a quick b before I ask you to help <laughs> I'll, I'll kind of tell you what we've done right uh, the team over the last couple of years has, has doubled in size. Um, we, we support production, so things like Snowville, uh, we're involved in, in, in many areas there. We set up stage, we set up things to help, help those production teams, help uh, with the sound reinforcement. Um, we do the streaming service, I mentioned that. Uh, Wi-Fi in the network, so over the last couple of years, uh, the team has worked uh, to replace all of the Wi-Fi and so as you go around and you've got good Wi-Fi signals, you move from room to room and you don't you lose that, they've replaced all of that, that infrastructure in recent time. They've also re, re, rebuilt the network, um, moved us off of uh, an, old, an old server to, to move us to Google. Um, so you, you've got quite a, a, a quite good IT team that supports the infrastructure of the church from a, from a network standpoint. Um, most recently, kinda, I'm going to kind of throw this into what's God been doing in, in current time. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had some water get in the auditorium, and uh, your team uh, worked on a, on a couple days, and they, they moved all the equipment over to the fellowship hall so that we could uh, have church in there um, and stream the services from a, a location that we had not been in before. So they set all that up, and then uh, a few weeks later, they moved it all back in here, and we're, we're running live again in this place, uh, back in the auditorium. Um, currently, during these auditorium uh, kind of refresh, if you will, uh, the team's involved in, in lighting, uh, doing some infrastructure that, that you'll see go up, some cosmetic work around the building. Uh, some of those things you'll see happen over the next few weeks. And uh, so that's, that's kind of currently going on. Um, in the future, right, uh, you will see some new speakers go in, and uh, that'll be installed and, and maintained and, and tuned up by our team, as well as uh, some lighting changes that, uh, that are coming. 
And then I think the, the last thing that our future holds is, is some unknown projects, right? So there's stuff that's uh, yet to be defined. And uh, where the need is, is every single category. Um, we've got a team that has doubled, but really it needed to triple. Uh, we've got enough folks back there to run every service, but when somebody steps out sick, steps up out on vacation, uh, then people end up double timing. And so Ed worked first service uh, setting the stream up and recording service, and now he's running slides for you this service. And uh, so we could certainly use a little more depth to our team. Uh, we could use another sound tech. If you are interested in that, uh, you, if you know how to play the radio, if you like music, you might give us a shout, right? We, can, uh, we, we, we are willing to train you. <laughs> Right. We will work with you if you have, uh, if you, you know, hey, I, I like music, I like to be involved, but uh, I'm not a musician. Uh, if you can hear, right, if you can, if you can, hey, this sounds good, uh, we can work with you and we've got spots to, uh, to put you. Uh, video, uh, you don't want to be seen because the job nobody wants is to run sound because when it does get out of control and squeals on you, everybody turns around and looks at the person back there at the desk. Um, if you do video, nobody can see you. You're, you're up behind the scenes, truly. And, and so that's a, that's a little nicer place to be um, as, as far as uh, you're not going to get called out and not going to be seen. You know, nobody's going to turn around. Uh, but those folks, uh, you know, we are, we're sure, like I said, Ed's, Ed's up there subbing in today. And uh, so we could use help there. On this, on, uh, th that group also does the lighting. So as it dims, you know, you're running slides and running lighting. It's, it's, it's really not as difficult as it sounds. Um, the streaming ministry, uh, there's two guys back there that support that, but if somebody's out, they need help. Um, and, and I like to have every ministry where you kind of have a primary person and a secondary person learning. I, th I think that's a good plan so that we're always discipling uh, new workers in, in every one of these areas. So, uh, you know, you would never be alone, you know, not, not unless something just happened and we didn't have much choice, but the, the plan would never be to, to, to just turn you loose on a computer or a soundboard and say, here you go. Um, we, would, we would work to train you, um, and, and we wouldn't let you solo until you were ready to go uh, by, by our measurement or by yours. Uh, you know, I think that's the, the promise I can make you is we want you very comfortable before you, uh, you, you got out there on your own. Uh, the final area is, is the big one, right? If you uh, swing a hammer, if you uh, know how to put wires together and run electricity, um, you know, Will Lambert's kind of our, our, our team member who... He steps in a couple times a year as we're pulling new network cables or new microphone cables, and Will steps in and helps us out. Uh, you know, if you'd like to help on, on some of these uh, undefined building projects, uh, infrastructure projects, whether they be IT related or electrical or something else, um, give us, a, you know, put your name in the email, send us a response, say, hey, you know, this is my talent, this is what God has uh, got me doing at work, or this is this is an area I've worked in in the past, um, this is where God's got me at, and I would. Uh, like to be part of the team. Um, we would love to talk to you. So with that, thank you for your time. And uh... Run over to Hebrews chapter number one with me. Be better. We'll incorporate a little bit of ADP sports as it fits our message. And we're going to talk a little bit about be better in ministry over the next few minutes. Uh, they did a great job. Thank you once again. Uh, ministry team, our leadership team has, a, of course, a, a many facets in which things have to get done around First Bible, from youth ministry to counseling to care ministry, hospitality, many of those things. Um, but these others that may be forgotten are just as important, and it goes back to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, and every part of the body is necessary, and God looks at the uh, feeble and uh, more feeble, less feeble, equally, everyone is to be uh, recognized and acknowledged for meeting needs in the body of Christ. And that's what Ministry Fair uh, does for us. Again, this is a way in which we'll put things before you. The follow-up again, I said earlier, and I will just reiterate, you will see a church-wide email go out this week. And then I'll send another one the following week to, to just kind of support that, to make sure that you have a chance to say, I am interested. I'd love to find out what's going on a little bit more for the children's ministry, for the communications, for ministry support. They all presented a great deal of things that God has done, things that God is currently doing, and in the way in which God is leading them as leaders to see their ministry be better in the next place, the next step. 
part of our series in just this time of the year and going between book studies. We'll be starting one after, I said, mentioned before, after the 25th anniversary. Oh, by the way, May 1, we'll be on the sports park. And uh, please continue to now really pay attention. I know that we have so many things going on, but now we'll ramp up our communications. We have put out a little bit here and there. You've known about it, and now we're extending our communications out more and more, and there'll be more frequency. But May 1, will be our big celebration of God's favor for 25 years, over 25 years. Make sure you're already setting away the time. And uh, if you know people that, hey, have been part of First Bible and they may have been communicated with already or not or be getting something, let them know that they're welcome to be here. It will be a great celebration on that Sunday. And again, there'll be a lot of people in the ministry support team and all the others in different ministries making sure that all things are done well there. Uh, and so we have an opportunity to partake in things and sometimes just be attenders. But when you're a servant, when you are involved in the success of a ministry like Happy Five Soccer yesterday or like children's ministry, infants over here, any place, God again is using all of that and uh, he wants to work through every one of us. The thought of being better or to be better again comes from Hebrews chapter number one. And we know, when, uh, as I told you to turn there, that our highlight verse is verse number four up on the screen. We know that uh, Jesus Christ is spoken of by God as being better. So verse number one says, God who in sundry times and divers' manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, verse two, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. God says in his ultimate plan of the ages. I've done things a certain way, but now I'm going to do something better. Here's what's going to be better. I'm going to speak in the last days by my son, who hath appoint, been appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Verse 3, who be in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had himself by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Being made, as it says up there, our highlight verse, our theme verse for our series, being made so much, so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. To be better, to eclipse where you were the time before, to excel beyond where you're currently at, to outdistance or to outclass, to outshine, to go past one who is above another person in a rank. So maybe they are better in that spot. Or in this simple definition, to be in a place that's a more favorable condition, to be in a position in which competing for something or wanting to get that first spot or the, the better spot, you might, might just say, I want to be in a better position. If you come out to Happy Five and you're thinking, okay, well, Happy Five Soccer Club, the kids, they're going to make lines for relays or drills or whatever, and you, so you say, make a line behind me. I want to be first. They're telling you they want to be better. They're pushing the other, eh, 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 no, pu no pushing, no pushing. No matter how many times you say it, they're pushing because they want to be better. That means they want to advance their position and where they're at. As I mentioned ADP Sports just for a minute, uh, and just highlighting as part of our ministry fair today, I wanted to, to really just remind you of how so many people are involved in it, and it's all of you, and some of you that can't maybe be on the fields or directly involved, you say, hey, I can pray for those children. Thank you for being there in ADP Sports. Sports missions, family. It's our three-piece focus that we have in our mission. We've refined our mission to look at the Acts 2 project, and we still center up on how we do things through missions, how we do things through the family of God and building you all up to be disciples, learn the Word of God, to grow in the grace and knowledge. And of course, sports is an aspect of our ministry flavor. Building bridges is the first thing that we think about when we come to ADP Sports as servants, as volunteers, as people that will sacrifice their time 
and be a living sacrifice. Building bridges, though, into people's lives, and I often say the other half of it is to go across that bridge and go grab them and walk them across, which means the relationship is not just a structural effort, but actually a relational effort. Secondly, that we are training servants. Servants are you. The servants in the kingdom of God, the servants in the body of Christ, and our family, our church family, that say, hey, I want to do something. Well, we train you in kingdom ministry. That means ministry that's outside of our Sunday morning gatherings because the kingdom of God is at hand. God is at work. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And so there's a bigger piece to God's handiwork and what he's doing. And the concession stand people in ADP Sports understand that. They're training each other how to make sure that they have the biggest bunch of people in that ministry. I don't know how it happens. They had three, they have four, they have six, they have eight, they have, gosh, I don't know. Good job, Crystal, way to go. Everybody wants to be part of the concessions crew. I don't blame you. Yesterday, real quick, they're cleaning things up. I'm getting in the garage, I'm getting out. Crystal says, hey, Brownie, quick, quick, what do you want us to do with the grill? Doug Nielsen says, the, the, the grill's on. I said, what are you talking about, the grill's on? Who turned the grill on? They blame the kids. I saw them out back. They had a skillet, eggs, bacon. They were making their own breakfast. And they didn't share with any of us. These are the things that go on. They're saying that's how we're going to be better. We're going to feed ourselves. But no. But they're training people. You want to get involved in a ministry like that. And then, of course, bringing the gospel. Bringing the gospel to people's lives through a devotion in our adults which is co-ed volleyball, co-ed softball, and men's softball in our adult ministry aspect. And, of course, the children. We have break time. Don't get too far ahead of me there, young man. You haven't been doing slides in a while. Okay, there you go. Jeez, there's substitutes in this ministry, I tell you. <sighs> Thank you, Ed. You're the best. You're the best. How do you put up with me? I have no idea. How does anybody put up with me? Bringing the gospel, though, we call it a devotion in the adults, but we also, of course, in our children, we call it break time. They sit down. Yesterday, we had break time, and uh, our theme this year is Why Miracles and Happy Five Soccer Club. I'll be getting all those break times out to the coaches this week, and they'll be able to look at them. What a neat little theme, and having the kids go, a miracle? What's a miracle? Why would Jesus teach in miracles? Why would God try to accomplish? Get them to start thinking. It hooks right into our children's ministry and teaching them about Jesus Christ. It's powerful. So open the slides here just for a minute. And this is a, an example of a, this is one of the little children that is in the volleyball ministry. Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry, that's Brian. Brian, right, is that you? Brian! That's Brian Callaway. <laughs> My assistant pastor, <laughs> you're the man. That is not the guy that went to Merida, Mexico right there. Andy, the archaeologist. Brian brought a great message in 10 minutes that day in co-ed volleyball about four weeks ago. I believe it was two or three people that raised their hands at the invitation time to receive Christ. Presenting the gospel, adults and children. Here's Bobby out there. Well, now, Bobby's not here, so I can have a little fun with him. When you, you know, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> but a lot of stuff goes on there. It was neat this year with co-ed volleyball. Dwayne was able to come out. Josh, all of our ministry pastors are able to come out and do a devotion. And Christine was able to come out and do it. And she helps out and kind of leads that co-ed volleyball. And also for our co-ed softball. But Bobby preached the gospel as well. Here's Christine, did a tremendous devotion last fall in our co-ed volleyball that Courtney and, uh, and Gabe um, Lutz oversee. Just seeing some of them, here's a picture of Eddie Hodges delivering the word of God. Keep on going right there. And he, of course, is again one of our leaders in the ministry involved in youth, but also too in the kids' sports, the adult sports. Hey, giving them a message, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then here's a guy that fell down over with his team. He was laying there. The kids picked him up. They propped me up. You can't see behind me, but there's a bench I'm leaning back against because I fell down. Just kidding. We're sitting down with the kids and giving them a little break time during coach pitch. 
This aspect is highlighted this morning for you in ADP Sports Ministry to just remind you of all that goes on in every one of the ministries of First Bible. The gospel is intertwined. Discipleship is intertwined. Ministry training is intertwined. Leadership, fellowship, the fellowship, all of it. This church that you are part of and you make it all better continually centers up on the Word of God continually centers up on the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, continually trains up people to be the next Timothy, the next Paul, the next person like Brian or Dwayne or anyone, or just simply you that volunteers and says, I'm available to do things. You see, this morning in our message, just tying things together and looking at things, I want you to just kind of think about what it takes to make a ministry, uh uh-uh, take a ministry, hang on, go backwards, thank you, there you go, to take a ministry to a place where you can say, hey, I know why I'm here, I want it to be better, what is it going to take to be better? This morning, in just a few minutes, I want to show you two things that will make a ministry better. I want you to think right now, what would make a ministry better? Because when you highlight so many aspects of serving the Lord, when you think of all the people that are involved in those little kids with their parents and their lives and all the coaches that are involved in that, just this one tiny, ADP sport, just a small part. Right now there's people over in the children's ministry on both sides of the building, as Pam highlighted, and they could use supports. They could use more people to watch babies, more people to teach. And then you say, well, they already got it all full. Where are we in discipling the next people to teach children? That's where we want to be in every one of our ministries. So it is imperative for us to see when we are thinking this ministry needs to be better, the better could be very simply that we need to go one more year, two more years, one more day with one more person, and that person decides being a living sacrifice in the Lord is all it takes. Who works on your heart to be a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God when it comes to our servanthood unto the Lord? Who's working on your heart? Is it just the Lord Jesus Christ and the thought of him? Is it Pam when she spoke here or Mindy or Rick? Who is working on you? Is it your family members? Is it, hey, I remember my dad used to do it. And, I, and my mom, and they, and they serve, why can't I do it? Maybe that's that family. Maybe it's just peers, peers in the ministry going, man, I just want to serve God like they do. Maybe it's someone that's discipling you, and they introduce you to a ministry that you truly had no interest in. You didn't even have anything. And then they said, why don't you come out and minister, and I'll show you how to do it. Very simply, maybe your father in heaven just telling you, you need to be involved in serving me. Since Jesus gave it all when he put away sin by the sacrifice of himself found in Hebrews, why would we look for some other way to approach ministry? I don't don't know why we want to look outside the word of God and outside the model of Jesus Christ and outside Paul the apostle and say, oh, I got a better way to do it. The better way is in the Bible. Since Jesus gave it all when he put away sin by the sacrifice of himself, Why would we look for some other way to approach ministry? You want to have your ministry be better? Then learn how to be a living sacrifice and continue to be. And that's why your ministries are successful. Because you said, I'm going to just do what the Word of God says. I'm going to obey what God says. I got some dealings with sin issues in my life. I need God to work on me. I got some time issues in my life where I need to manage my time better. I need to get my people skills to be better. God can do all of that. Is there any other acceptable approach than Jesus Christ? to be a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Essentially, the principle of sacrifice as a verb means to devote with loss or suffer loss of. Now, the verb side of sacrifice doesn't appear nearly as much as the noun side of sacrifice in the Bible. But it does mean, very simply, to suffer loss for sake of obtaining something. Let me say that again. Suffer loss for sake of obtaining something. It's not give up like I throw my hands up, I give up. It's giving up something. Suffering loss to obtain something that would, in this case, be eternal. It would be something totally and completely eternal. 
Turn to Hebrews chapter number 10. I'll be there in a minute. Essentially, the principle of sacrifice as a noun means destruction or surrender of something for the sake of something else. So that's the noun side. And you go into the Levitical law. You go into the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. And God said, you're going to have to have a sacrifice for the remission of sin. But it was temporary. It would take care of sin. It would cover the sin. Remember, when Jesus' blood was shed, it washed away all sin. And we find that in Hebrews. You see, what does God want us to see when we look at the principle of sacrifice? Sometimes we use it out of context. I just need to be more sacrificial. The whole idea between what it means to be a sacrifice or as the verb side of it to say, okay, I know that I'm going to have to be in a place where I've sacrificed something. It really gets back to... <laughs> In the word of God, it's anything, a sacrifice is anything that was destroyed. Anything that was surrendered or lost to gain something. Now, we are told that we're a living sacrifice. So why are our ministries in the gospel of Jesus Christ made better by a strong dedication to be a living sacrifice? I witness it everywhere. I look around, I get a chance to know people, and I know why their ministry is successful why it's, being, it's continuing to be better. Because they are a living sacrifice as a leader, and then they incorporate other people and disciple them into being a living sacrifice because it is a paradoxical statement. It's an oxymoron. It's sacrifice is something that's destroyed, but living is something that's obviously alive. How does that work? That sounds very basic, Pastor. Well, it is. The thing is, we need to make our ministries better and find how, how to do it. Well, Jesus Christ showed us the model. The Word of God has it intricately and then simply intertwined in the words. Make your ministry better through sacrifice. We're to make better ministry. Better ministry through sacrifice. And when we see this, we go, okay, yeah, I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it. You know what? If you could just listen just a couple of times to what it means in, in the book of Hebrews, and I've already used these in the last couple of weeks, but just think of this, Hebrews 7, 7. I mentioned Hebrews 7 last week quite a bit. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Hebrews 7, 7. Hebrews 7, 19. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did by the which we draw nigh unto God. And of course, Hebrews 7, 22 was a paramount piece of our message last week, why settle for less? It says in Hebrews 7.22, by so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament, a better covenant, a better agreement. And of course, when you have a covenant, there has to be a sacrifice. Blood must be shed for a covenant to be bound. That's the word of God. Throughout the word of God, you'll find that. And so when you say, how do I make my ministry better? You're already doing it, church. And so today, through the Word of God, I just want to point out two simple things in our lesson that show us that we're doing what is right and we need to continue to do what's right and then let God give the increase. Let God continue to work His work and we stay obedient to His Word. We stay obedient. Let, let the sin stuff go away and let the heart of the Lord work into your heart. Let your will go away and let His will take and implant itself in you. And that's really what simply the Word of God is teaching us when it comes to how we make our ministries better through sacrifice. Hebrews 10, verse number 10. I want to read these verses and just speak of one simple thing. Then I'm going to go to Romans 12, living sacrifice. Read those few verses. Excuse me. Speak of one simple thing as part of our lesson today. Two simple pieces and we'll be done. Hebrews 10, verse number 10, we're going to start right there. We're going to start right there. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the one body of Jesus Christ once for all. Consider this, that applies back up, but I included it in our text for message today because really the sacrifices that are brought each and every year, the sacrifices that are laid out again in Hebrews 10, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. It's done right there. That's verse number 10. Well, we continue in verse number 11, a reiteration of the message of what the Old Testament says. 
And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. They can remit them or cover them, but they cannot take them and completely wash them away. Verse number 12, but this man, this man, you know who this man is? It's Jesus Christ. After he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. That's Jesus Christ. From henceforth, he is the better. He has always been the better. He's the better sacrifice, the better testament, as we have been saying in this short little series. He continues here in verse number 14. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. When you're born again, it says here in the scriptures clearly, and it is in the book of Romans as well and other places, you are saved, born again, justified. In God's eyes, he sees you through the blood of Jesus Christ. So now he sees you as a converted person. It's doctrinally sound in his word. He's saying, I've perfected you for glory when you get there. For now, you got this battle. You got this battle with the house that you have to carry around, your vessel. And he's saying by one offering, Jesus' is offering, the Bible says, he's perfected forever them that are sanctified. Verse 15 says, whereof, here's the promise of the Holy Ghost reiterated, also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. No more offering for sin. No more payment for the sin when you're born again. Now I take that and I go, okay, how can our ministries be made better? Well, our ministries can be made better because of the new and better sacrifice by Jesus Christ for our sins that's freed us to serve in him. It's basically very simple. But yet somehow this stops people. I'm not good enough. I got too much baggage. Well, guess what? He's forgiven you. Now you need to make some things right. Maybe get involved in a disciple-making relationship and learn the word of God. Have a better relationship with God and allow the Holy Spirit of God to grow you. That's what he does. He teaches and he guides. He reproves. That's the Holy Spirit. Learn how to have a better relationship with the Father in heaven. Somebody can teach you how to do that, but you're going to have to take it up and do it yourself. Because Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, his cross daily, and follow me. It's your personal responsibility, but there are people here to walk alongside of you so that you can say, hey, the new and better sacrifice by Jesus for my sins is freed me to serve. I just need to go through some steps in order for me to be in a place where I can serve. We're not going to throw anybody just in the children's ministry. Sorry. Ain't happening. You ain't getting near them, kids, until we prove you faithful, and we make sure we run a background check, and we make sure that we take about three pints of your blood and run it through to see if you've got diabetes, <laughs> if you've got sugar problems, if you've got high blood pressure. That's why I can't work in children's ministry. I couldn't, I couldn't get through the blood test. You're going to disciple somebody, and you've never, ever been discipled before? Ain't happening. You're going to stand up and teach the Bible? Ain't happening. Sorry, it's just the way it goes. Can you serve in other areas? Absolutely. Can you work with someone else that mentors you in other ministries while you're working through life stuff? Absolutely. Our ministries are made better because of the new and better sacrifice. That's the starting point. The Holy Spirit witnesses through the word. The Holy Spirit witnesses through the work of Jesus Christ. That's the working of a believer and what's going on in a believer's life. Guess what? If you're not saved, it ain't happening. So you need to get, be born again. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, and there's a beginning point to serve him properly. Go to Romans chapter number 12, verse number 1. Romans 12. Let's just advance right over there. Romans 12, verse number 1. We'll go there for time. Put the heading up there, Romans 12, verse number 1. There we go. We're going to go cover verses 1 through 8. Romans 12, 1 through 8. Now, very simply here, you're going to hear maybe a verse that's familiar to some of you. 
verse number one. Number two, I believe that number three is forgotten a lot. It should be part of the package there. And then when we see verses four through eight, you see some of the really neat body of Christ principles of how you can serve and minister with what God has put together in your life. Romans 12, verse number one. Remember, we're just going to make a simple statement here that applies to our lesson about how we make our ministries better. So we're going to read this. I'll make that statement and pull these things together for a conclusion. Verse number one, chapter number 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present, 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 present your bodies, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Verse number two, really important here. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you, that we, that we could prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Ooh, God has some strong qualifications for you and I serving him. Verse number three, for I say through the grace given unto me, Paul writing this, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. Very simply, he's covered all three areas in which we can be tempted in sin. Pride of life, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. He's saying, you're going to have to deal with you and let my word deal with you, and then I got you in a place where, hey, you can be a living sacrifice and serve. What a great way to do things. Well, I just want to come up and preach. Well, go ahead. Send me an email. I'll let you preach next week. No problem. No, I don't think so. Not on Easter. Verse number four. Four through eight. Watch this. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we be many are one in one body in Christ, every one members of one another. In the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit, by the Father, in his word, he has put us in as one together. But there's something about the differentiation of each person in their gifts. Verse 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophecy prophesy according to the proportion of faith, verse 7, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Wow. That kind of summarizes a lot. That's a preaching message of two hours right there, but I want to make just one simple statement as we come together and finishing up. Our ministries can also be made better because of the Word, because of the Spirit, and they both have made us a living sacrifice for ministry in His church. So, wow, being saved, sins forgiven, getting in the Word of God, Holy Spirit working to teach me, I'm a living sacrifice if I would choose to do so. That is your choice, your free will choice. I would suggest that you do it. You're not going to miss out on anything. You're going to get in on God's sweet grace, getting involved in people's lives, or if you like to do things behind the scenes, and hey, I don't want to be seen, I just want to be a support personnel person. I can do things on, on, uh, on social media. I can do things to serve. By the way, there's the care ministry, the hospitality ministry. There's so many other ministries here. There's the ushers, the welcome team, all of that. Let's keep in mind who is at work here. It is God who is at work, and if you would allow him, he is willing to do according to his good pleasure. He wants to work in you. And again, I need to be willing to let him work on me. You need to let him work on you to be better in that ministry, to be better and so completely say, God, I'm so dedicated to you. I don't, I'm not going to give every single hour for every ministry. That's not what I'm saying. I'm dedicating my life to you, Lord, and just put me in a spot and I can serve you in a way that you are pleased and glorified. So I pull this all together with the last slide. Today's prayer time. After thinking and listening, going, hey, our ministries can be better because of the new and better sacrifice by Jesus. He's freed me to serve. Our ministries are made better also, too, by the fact that the Word of God and the Holy Spirit of God have worked in us to make us a living sacrifice. You are being invited by the Word of God. You are being invited to pray over the need to be better in ministry. Many of you are involved. Many of you say, hey, I can serve in different ways. But many of you say, I don't know if you could use me, if God could. 
Well, how about if we all come together to say, I can be better, I can be part of being better as a church in ministry with your church family. It's really neat when you hear a few people speak of things that are going on on Sundays and you're not even aware of how many men and women, brothers and sisters in the Lord, are supporting the ministries of First Bible just on a Sunday. Does anybody remember who made the coffee today? Does anybody know? What's her name? Courtney. Courtney. Now, you didn't know that if, hey, I was looking right at you, and if you said the right answer, I was going to give you $100. I've been trying to give away that $100 bill underneath the chairs for stinking months, and nobody's found it yet. Josh Bennett's picked up these chairs like 200 times. He hasn't found it yet. What's my point? Sometimes we go looking for a $100 bill more than we go looking for just God's will in our lives. Are you available? Are you willing to be prepared and let God grab your will and turn it into his will? Bow your heads as we play some music in the background for our invitation time. Father in heaven, it's been a sweet time to hear these ministry later, uh, leaders, my brothers and sisters in the Lord who love you so much. Thank you for Pam and Mindy and Rick delivering such a succinct and beautiful message of what you have been doing, what you're currently doing, and what they'd love to see you do more of to be better in their ministries. Thank you for their heart to serve you, their example. I thank you for everyone here this morning, everyone listening, and how so many people of First Bible are involved in serving you. It overwhelms me. I don't listen to all those different percentages and platforms telling me things. I know that this church is extra special because of you. You've touched people's lives. You've worked in their hearts. You've discipled people. You've trained them in ministry, and we continue to go on because we want to see people come to know Jesus Christ as Savior. So God, have your way. As I often say, it is you that worketh in both the will and to do of your good pleasure. We want you to work this morning. In the next couple of minutes, we pray in Jesus' name. Would you please stand up? And I know it's